Hello and welcome to another episode of Pitch Cafe podcast a place where talent meets coffee this is a place where startup founders get roasted toasted or boosted anything can happen over a cup of coffee fun conversations happen over a cup of coffee startup ideas happen over a cup of coffee but today we have a very special guest and if i were to make a list of all his accomplishments it would take me all day but i'll just keep it crisp and say This gentleman has 186 patents. His patents could be running on any of your cell phone devices. So, with such a phenomenal portfolio of patents, I thought he's the best person to explain to any startup founder what is it like to get an IP or a patent? Why it is so important? Do investors love patents? What are the pros and cons of it? So, this gentleman whose name i'm going to reveal is going to give you a really brief tutorial on patenting and ip issues he is none other than deepak shaker his latest startup chobotics got acquired by dodash and i'm so excited to have him here and tell us all about patent and ip and his latest ventures <music> Deepak welcome to the show. Hey Vidya, uh good to be on your show. Thank you Deepak. L- let's start with your uh background a little bit. You're from IIT Madras, you've got your PhD from Georgia Tech. You know, what is it that uh, got you into the startup world and why is it that you, you know, are so uh, accomplished? You have 186 patents and what's your what's your secret? Yeah, I think the key is to work on things you love. Uh and not chase money or anything if you work on something you love and you go all in on it uh, you know it does result in uh, good work which you can feel proud of so i think that's the key work on something you love fantastic so uh, i work with a lot of startup founders and they struggle with this idea of ip and patenting you know i really wish i had an expert genie or someone to go tell them how important uh, it is to file a patent what is it that startup founders need to know about filing an ip or a patent most startup founders don't understand the importance of filing it however there are pros and cons to it as well so tell us the why of it why do does the founder need to file an ip yeah so I, it's good to have a patent uh, because it helps you protect your innovation from copycats you don't want someone else uh, copying the same thing uh, and offering it at a lower price so it helps you protect your idea and for investors in a startup for example that's crucial because if someone else a bigger company wants to copy you and has 10 times the resources you have you know that can put you out of business so having a uh, intellectual property on what you're doing uh, is a uh, is a pretty uh, big advantage and many uh, investors actually without ip they don't even invest in you and so the pros and cons are one you can charge higher prices because you have fewer people copying you another pro is when you get acquired by company if it's uh, if you got a whole bunch of patents where you can uh, protect your innovation from others you become more valuable during an acquisition as well the cons are that patents are expensive or patents can often cost you $10,000 just to draft it and there's maintenance fees of uh, which can go to $15,000 or more just to keep the patents alive and then you often when you negotiate the patent with the patent office it can cost you as much as $10,000 just to do some uh, back and forth and have lawyers uh, involved with that and if you want to file internationally in other countries and protect your patents in Japan or in China or India it can get very expensive as well you can you're talking about $50,000 or more simply because you often have to translate the uh, patents into different languages you get yeah. lawyers involved in new country so it's a pretty expensive uh, endeavor but there are ways to lower the cost and people who are savvy with patents know how to get patents filed and approved at much lower cost so let's get back to your uh, personal experience you have 186 patents so if there is a startup founder 
how would you tell him the importance of you know filing a patent i know you said it's to protect yourself from larger companies copying you but really what is patenting and why should startup founders do it and how do they identify some idea which can be patented yeah, so the first thing is to come up with the idea right normally startups are founded on new ideas right. and if the ideas you know can be are unique and can be patented that's great there's really two main things to look look at when you uh, decide whether to file a patent on an idea one thing is whether uh, the idea is discoverable meaning whether you can detect someone else copying your idea and whether you can prove it in a court of law mm -hmm. so ha with hardware technology let's say you come up with a better dishwasher design right for yeah. example then you if someone copies you you can just point to the hardware and say hey this uh, company is copying my design and you can actually uh, have a lawsuit against them or figure out the out of court settlement and uh, enforce your intellectual property mm -hmm. but let's say the new idea is uh, an algorithm in a piece of software right. where you really don't have access to the source code and you can't really show the effect of your new algorithm very clearly then it's hard to detect infringement in those cases mm -hmm. so it will be hard for you to enforce your patents mm -hmm. and so the the case for writing a patent there in that case is lower right. so the other thing to consider beside mm -hmm. whether the patent is enforceable mm -hmm. is uh, you got to figure out if it there's a business case for it right. because if it's going to cost you uh, you know 20k to 100k to file the patent yeah the value of the patent needs to be more than 20k at least right. so you got to make sure there's a business case for it and it's a big enough idea with right. where you're going to be benefit from the idea being filed as a patent okay got it so that's an interesting because founders need to understand uh, they are doing a lot of creative work so there should be a good business case and your idea should have that kind of traction so it's about uh, uh, you know, Desh Deshpande, a very prolific uh, investor. He's, uh, I think, star, uh, one of the core uh, founders of MIT uh, Innovation Initiative at uh, uh, Boston. He uh, talks about solvers, complainers, and uh, problems. So they say that in the East, Eastern Hemisphere, there are a lot of problems and a lot of solutions coming from places like Valley and Boston. And uh, there are complainers in, uh, in the East because they're struggling for survival. And here we have a lot of solutions. So you're mapping the solution to the problem and you're going to the location where the problem is. It's really nice. And um, okay, coming back to the question here, you built a solution. So what is your advice for people who are building solution? What kind of take should they have on patents? So you built, you have ideas on EdTech and you built this robot. You are not just cooking, you are actually thinking about building it. So, you know, at what level do you get to, you know, when you have to file a patent? What's that journey? Yeah, so uh, again, I looked at uh, the high cost of patents, okay? That was a problem for me. Mm -hmm. So I thought about how to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So there's a few ways I've figured out over the years to solve the problem of high cost of patents. One way is it's not hard to write a patent yourself. That's uh, because you're so smart, but most people do struggle with filing a patent. You can actually... Uh, when I talk about writing a patent, the normal procedure is you come up with the idea, you write like a one or two page invention disclosure, okay. and then you give the invention disclosure to a really costly lawyer, and then the lawyer takes $10,000 to file the patent for you. The lawyer writes up the patent and then files it for you. So a patent actually has many components. You've got claims, which is what you negotiate with the patent office, and you also have a detailed description which is what takes a lot of the lawyer time to write. Right. So it, with just a one hour or two hour tutorial, anybody can write the detailed description themselves right. and use a lot less lawyer time. Yeah. And so if you can write the detailed description yourself and right. use the lawyers only for the claims, I your see. cost per patent goes down to $2,500 instead of $10,000. Wow, that's a big reduction about especially for a startup founder <laughs> yeah it, it's a very expensive every dollar is uh, is seed it's got a lot of potential right so so you know you said you can write it yourself um, 
what so you're actually dissecting this whole patenting process by first principles maybe your next startup will be in filing patents uh, so <laughs> yeah actually continuing on that vein right there's multiple ways to solve the patent cost issue one way is like i mentioned uh, just have the lawyers write the claims the second way to solve it is a lot of the cost of the patents come because you have office actions where the patent examiner says no to a certain claim and then you have a lot of negotiation, which involves a cost, lot of costly lawyer time. And that can cost as much as $5,000 to $7,500 uh, per patent. I and see. the way to cut that short mm -hmm. is to have Zoom call with the patent examiner and explain your idea to them, hear from the patent examiner all the problems they have, and just negotiate it out over a Zoom call versus have a lot of costly lawyer time with uh, sending written responses back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that can save you around $5,000 per patent. So when I said playbook and when you go back to your 186 marathon of patents, can you structure your patents? Like uh, when I work for Medtronic or St. Jude Medical, they have like one core patent, which is really earth shattering. And then all of them are incremental. Uh, and uh, some companies, uh, they every patent is new and it's literally uh, breathtaking. So if you look at Tesla they uh, or SpaceX right now, everything they're doing is literally groundbreaking uh, in, in, in space, you know. Uh, so if, if you look at that, what is your uh, landscape of patents like? Do you come up with many new or uh, there were few new and you incrementally progressed on them? Yeah, so you always have what you call patent families. Uh, where you have a central idea and then around it you build more ideas. Right. So I, I'll give you one example, right? With my last company, one of the main ideas there was uh, coming up with, uh, we were trying to dispense food yeah. into uh, salad bowls. Uh, uh, so <laughs> tomatoes and we were trying to dispense tomatoes and carrots and spinach and things like that. So it turned out that dispensing all these food types with different shapes and sizes was very difficult. We would often have errors and we would not be able to dispense the exact weight we wanted. And so the, the idea there was I'd worked on flash memory before earlier in my career mm -hmm. where uh, we used to use all kinds of sophisticated algorithms mm -hmm. to compensate for the transistors inadequacies. So I started thinking, hey, why can't we use some algorithm for the dispensing right. where, uh, you know, you improve the accuracy of the dispensing. Right. So let's say uh, if the tomatoes, if you have, uh, so one example of algorithm is let's say you're dispensing tomatoes mm -hmm. and so, some one day the tomatoes are much bigger mm -hmm. because it came from a different farm, mm -hmm. then maybe uh, you have a, you have an algorithm which kind of detects that mm -hmm. and compensates for that. Mm -hmm. And so... The central idea with all this was to have algorithms to control the dispensing of food. Right. And so we came up with uh, around uh, 30 or 40 different algorithms on error recovery algorithms, on uh, different ways to have sensors uh, detect the algorithms. Right. And so that particular idea itself should result in around 10 patents, I would think, on different algorithms to control the dispensing but the central idea was one was that we would use all these uh, algorithms to control dispensing of food so so you know uh, I want you to hold that thought because I'm thinking this is a process patent and there's a technology patent there's an alg uh, algorithm improvisation patent what patent was this yeah so you have normally two types of patents okay you have method patents mm -hmm. Uh, where the method patterns tell you a method of doing something. So things like uh, algorithms, uh, they normally are method patterns. Right. And then you have apparatus patterns where it's mm -hmm. related to how things look uh, physically, for example. Uh, for instance, with the light bulb here, just having a tungsten filament could be, th that's an apparatus pattern. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I want to keep going, but I know your time is valuable, it's precious, and you gave a really amazing journey of the landscape of intellectual property and patenting, and startup founders are, will be more than happy to absorb this knowledge and implement it. Before I wrap up, what is your one takeaway from filing so many patents and uh, being on your second startup and having worked with so many inventions 
in your uh, Chobotics uh, food robot company. Uh, what What is your one takeaway from that which you want to tell the startup founder, the youth entrepreneurs? Yeah, I would say uh, just try to make the world a better place. Uh, quite honestly, I don't really care about how many patents I have. It, it's more about uh, making the world a better place. So if you come up with a product which uh, a lot of people can use to make their lives better, it's good. And a patent which is not used is worthless uh, in my mind at least oh gosh i'm going to i'm going to keep that tagline as a deepak shaker's uh, quote you know uh, what is the use of a patent which cannot be used what is the use of all that literature in research which cannot be used just makes the lawyers uh, rich <laughs> <laughs> okay on that note thank you so much for your most amazing time you're a really a humble down to earth and uh, very enterprising person, the youth entrepreneurs and this whole genre of startup founders who are looking at IP and patenting have a lot to learn from you. We want to listen uh, more from you. We want to have you back on Pitch Cafe. On that note, thank you, Deepak. Thank you very much. Awesome.